Welcome to this video lesson of a transcription I did of Earl Scruggs playing Don't Let Your Deal Go Down. Uh, I'll link to the YouTube video below uh, from which I transcribed this. Uh, the tabs will be on the screen, the chords will be on the screen, we'll talk about them. But if you want a copy of, uh, like a PDF of the tabs um, and the lead sheet with the chords and the text, you can uh, patronize me. Uh, also link below. So. <clears throat> This isn't too tough. It's really only eight bars long, uh, but uh, there's some interesting uses of the forward roll happening here. And also because it's in the key of F, uh, he, Scruggs does some kind of ingenious like solutions to problems that come up. So it's a really nice one to learn. So I'll play through it first, then I will play through the chords and sing it just so you can kind of hear it and see maybe how I end up tackling these chords. And then we'll talk about the form and then we'll go line by line through the transcription. So, this is what it sounds like. A one, two, a one. the tune let's quickly talk about these chords because it's a bit weird uh this is a bit more of like a i think of it as a jazzy progression because there's a lot of stuff like what key are we in um if you're comfortable knowing keys you can you can kind of look we we have these chords i'll just play them for you it's d g uh, c and f and that's that's the whole tune d g c f so if you ask yourself what key is this often uh, people's first instinct is to go oh it's whatever the first chord is it's in the key of d well, uh, D has three chords in it. It's D, A, and G. Well, uh, three major chords in it, I guess, the one, four, and five. And you have a G, but you don't have an A, you know, like this probably isn't D. Um, if you know the chords in G, we tend to play G, C, and D. Well, these three chords are here, but F doesn't exist in that. Now, there's no major key that has four major chords in it. So something weird's going on here. Um, so how do we figure out what key it's in? Well, the best way is just to use your ear. And if you go through the tune, you can hear that the very last note, uh, like, like we start on a D note. Well, I've been all around this whole wide world. I've been down to sunny Alabama. The very end where we resolve, the most at home we end up being. Um, oh, I'll go, uh, don't let your deal go down. Tell your last gold dollar is gone. This sounds like the most at home. Gone. We end up singing this F note. Everything resolves on that F. So that makes me think, okay, we're playing in the key of F. Now there's different solutions to play in the key of F, but because we're playing D and G and C and all these kind of chords, um, uh, Scruggs just decides to play it in standard old G tuning. So that's kind of an interesting choice because playing uh, F and G tuning is not the, the easiest thing to do. But we'll talk about that as we go. Now, where do these chords come from? Well, it's kind of this like old trick of the chord uh, that's the strongest resolution is always this the fifth chord in the key. So when we're playing the key of G, uh, the chord that generally comes right at the end of the tune is going to be a D or a D7. That resolution is called a 5-1. Five, one. Five, one. Singing that wrong. But um, <clears throat> if we're in the key of F, well, the 5 of, of F is C. So we get this C resolving to the F. Right? Um, now, where does the G come from? Well, it's actually the five of the C. Right? And then where does the D come? It's the five of the, of the G. These are called secondary dominants, and we're stringing uh, secondary dominants here. So F is our tonic. We're playing the five of that, and then we're playing the five before that, and then we're playing the five before that. Now that's a lot of theory and it's kind of nice to know these terms, but 
why, what's the point of it? And the reason it's nice to know that is because if we know how those chords function, we know how to play to them. So because those chords are all five chords, right? They're, they're the five of something, again, secondary dominance, we can play these all as dominant chords. So you will hear that uh, both in my playing and a little bit um, in what Scruggs is playing. You know, you hear this like D and then I'll play a D7 and then G and then I'll play a G7 and then I'll play C and then I'll play a C7 and then I'll play F just to kind of create a bit of motion. Um, so if you know that they're, they're five chords, it means you can play dominant uh, type stuff to them. So that's kind of a nice thing to know. Anyways, uh, so uh, let me really quickly just mention about these chords that I'm playing. So I, I think I did this with a D, and then when I went to a D7, if you go from this open D chord to this D7, it sounds like it's getting weaker. You know, it's not a very, like the tension is getting less. And normally when you go from a major chord to a dominant, you want it to be more tense. Um, and the reason this is sounding weaker is this high F sharp goes down. And that kind of sounds more resolved. So what I tend to do when I want to do this is I'll go from this D chord to this D7, where I keep holding this F sharp here. So that's a bit of a stretch. If that's tough for you, don't worry about it, but it is a very useful chord. I end up using that move relatively often. Um, okay, uh, and then same thing, G, G7, you can either get this F here or F here if you want, and then C, C7 is just like this with your pinky, and then F. Now, one thing that people have uh, find a hard time with this tune is when you get to the F, um, we're so used to like getting to the home, being G, and playing like a G leg. Right? And we can't do that on an F. So we gotta figure something else out. So what I did in this, uh, to show you how to use this, is I did the lick that uh, Scruggs does on the F, which is kind of almost like, you get like a two finger sound. It's played in a different way. And what he's doing is he's holding this F and he's going thumb, index, metal, thumb, index, metal, right? And then he just adds hammer-ons from open strings. That's a really cool trick to use on an F. Like, now that, now that I got that, that Took me a little while because it, it feels a little weird because it sounds to me like a two finger thing. So I want to do this thumb, thumb, index instead of thumb, index, metal. But uh, now I'm just going to use that all the time on the F. It sounds really great. I think it's cool. Okay, that's enough with the chord talk. Let's get in uh, line by line through this. So essentially it's only uh, four bars long, but let's talk about it. We have this intro and what we start off with this kickoff is we start with an F chord. So it's important to make this pretty much this whole F chord shape and it'll help with this. So we get um, these two notes with our index in the middle here. And we ha we use our index here because we have to go really quickly with our thumb. And we just go down. So uh, one, two, three, four, one. And we're up here to this D. Party Mountain break down here with two hammer on. Making sure you start that bar with your index finger. Now these two bars on the G are actually kind of weird. So let's talk really quickly about these two bars. So we have uh, this pull off here with, and I want to use my middle to my index finger here because then I need to bring my middle finger up here to get this slide from three to five. And I think really those two bars of G are the toughest of this, this tune. Um, and I want you to notice also that he's just playing the melody. Oh, honey, don't let your deal go down. Right? Okay, so uh, one more time with these four bars. Now here we have a C chord. And it's a bit of a weird thing on a C chord, but we want to get our index finger here because we're making a C. Right, again, the C chord. So let me play those uh, two bars of C again. Then here we do this F lick. Now we don't go from open string because we've got our middle finger here, so we just go from there. Now, if you're not comfortable going from a C to an F, you're gonna to wanna to spend a little bit of time doing this. You'll notice that my first finger stays in the same place when I go from C to F, but that's essentially what we do. We have this C shape here when we first hit that F, and we hammer on, and then we can make that F. It gives us a little bit extra time. 
and that's essentially just the same thing we did. One, one, two, three, four, level four. Okay, then we essentially play the whole thing again. Change the last bar a little bit. Right? Oh, I hit that in the wrong, wrong. Yeah, and then uh, when you listen to this, it's really common and in the version of the YouTube video that Scruggs plays, because it's kind of quick right after that to go into the singing, there's just an extra bar of F in there. And you can keep doing this. Essentially, you can just kind of wait until the singer comes in. Last thing I'm going to do here in this video is just go through it nice and slow so you can kind of play along. Uh, so here's what it sounds like slow. A one, two, a one. Good luck with everything. Have fun with this one. Bye.